The Rocky Mountains provide the backdrop in Boulder, Colorado, and if you're looking for the buffaloes, they ain't hard to find. Little gets the blood boiling, quite like a rivalry game. Barbs, shots, trash talk, things that go on throughout the week will now all be settled on this field. As we'll see the number five team in the country, the Utah Utes, taking on another unit from the Big 12, the Colorado Buffaloes. Glad to have you with us for EA Sports College Football. I'm Reese Davis, David Pollack, and Jesse Palmer with me in the booth. Guys, we are ready to tee it up. The Buffaloes will kick it off to get us underway. He'll bring it out. It's Stanley. Rolling the dice to bring it out of the end zone did not work out as he stopped at the 13. So the Utah Utes return man hardly helped out the offense with that one. These rivalry games can really get the blood pumping, and we'll see who can manage their emotions best early. Everyone's been waiting for this game, right? You know both of these teams have had this game circled all the way back to the beginning of the offseason, so you got to be able to play under control. With passion, with energy, with hatred, because it's a rivalry game, but keep your emotions in check and making sure I'm controlling what I can control. Going to the running game. Runs ahead and powers his way for four yards out to the 30. Really important for a ranked team going into a hostile environment like this one not to give the underdog reason to believe. Yes, reason to believe, and don't give the fans reason to get jacked up and excited. Come out early, be in a business mode mindset. You got to start fast. You got to have a sense of urgency. You cannot come sleepwalking into an environment like this because if you do and you make some mistakes, this crowd will pounce on you and seize momentum. At the 45 on his way. He gets it to the 31-yard line. A big play for this offense. Listen, the big hog mile is up front. The big offensive line paved the way for a big first down. The Utes have it with a first and ten. Looking to move it through the air. Makes the catch. It's Alford. And the defense settled in to stop that one for a short game. And now on second down for this offense. They run the reverse. And that play looked great when they drew it up in the playbook. Did not look so great when this defense snuffed it out. Looking to throw, it's rising. He makes the connection. I think early in the game, you can really set the tone. You got the completion, you set up a manageable fourth down situation. Do I want to be aggressive? Do I want to show them I'm willing to go for it on fourth down? I got a great opportunity right here. Didn't make him sweat at all. It's good. And that'll put the first points of the game on the board. It's three to nothing. I'll tell you, this is not an easy place to play on the road, especially at nighttime. This crowd. They get loud. That's the way it's been so far, but they have a nice drive to open it up. They're able to execute. They put themselves in field goal range, knock it through the uprights. They did exactly what they needed to do, taking a 3-0 lead here early on the road. That's impressive. So they're lining up to kick it off after that last drive, put a three spot on the board, and now the defense will try to shut them down. On the move from inside is five. Nice job executing all of the assignments as they put a stop to that return at the 22. So Colorado's offense has the ball for the first time. And this figures to be just a tremendous matchup of big play receivers, Jesse. And because of their skills, Reese, you're going to see all types of ways in how they use them, right? They're going to throw it to them. They'll throw screens. They'll get jet sweeps. Get these guys as many touches as you can. Well, and the good thing is, if you're a defense, you're used to it. You see this guy in practice every day. Now you're seeing another guy that's elite. Which defense can rise to the challenge and get a few stops and maybe nullify the playmaker? Looking to go up top on first down. Gets it out quickly. I love early in a game getting my quarterback in a rhythm. Coming out, short passes, easy completions. Now we're getting in a good spot. Looking for a crease. It's Hayden. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. And the Buffaloes want to move quickly. Shotgun snap, wants to throw it on third. Just a short pass to the tight end. 
And they gave him no chance to get loose, and they force a fourth down. And the Buffaloes send out the punt unit. First one is away, and boy, did he put in work in that loss last week, kicking it five times. Utah has it back on the offense coming onto the field. They kicked a field goal on the last drive, Jesse. They've got the lead. Don't make a dumb mistake, but maintain your aggressive play calling. Yeah, no doubt. And I think it's the play caller right now just taking a look at that script he's got in front of him and finding out where are my playmakers, who can we take advantage of on this defense to get a touchdown here, baby. Yeah, and just keep moving the ball down the field. Just execute a little bit better in the red zone. There's no need to panic. We're moving the football, and we got the lead. They'll run the counter. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. Well, good call by the defense there. They dialed up blitz into that running play, and the linebacker able to make the stop. They'll give it to the back. They have relished this tight victory since the last time these two got together, Colin. Guys, this winning is beautiful. And when you beat your rival and you get those bragging rights, Palmer, it is a glorious thing for a whole year and sometimes longer. Well, that's the best thing about rivalry games like this. For the winning team, whoever pulls this one out here today, their fans are going to be bragging about this one for a long time. The Buffaloes will send out the punt unit. The punt goes out of bounds and a nice job to get them backed up. I think they'll spot it right around the 15. And the Colorado offense is coming back onto the field. David, the punter got some work last time. They'd like to keep him on the sidelines in this drive. Yeah, and it's not something you want to say very often. You don't want the punter out there. This offense needs to get back lathered up and get a little bit more of a rhythm. Best way to do that, identify where your best players are and just get them the football. Give these guys some touches to kickstart this offense. They'll keep it on the ground. Brought down to the ground, but he has enough for the first down. This is a guy that can find you the hidden yardage. That play, he just pushes the pile to get that first down. Setting up for a first and ten from the 26. Pulls and fires complete. He is going nowhere. Stop at the line of scrimmage. This offense has a second down play. Back to pass. It's Sanders. Quick strike complete. Still on his feet at the 45. Major gaps in that defense, and he got loose, and they finally knock him down at the 41. Well, after that last play, you can see how electrifying this guy is and how special he is after he makes the catch. If I'm on offense, I'm trying to find a lot of ways to get him touches in this game. Trying to find his man on first down. He finds his man. And good coverage by the defense, just a short game. And the Buffaloes moving quickly to the line. He's looking for a man on second down. Gets it out fast. No chance to run, but still a good game. Third down coming up after that completion. They'll run play action. Fires to the wideout. He's got an open man. Slippery slide. Find his way and ran away from the crowd into the end zone. Touchdown, Colorado. If you're able to move the ball in a drive like that, the most overrated stat in football would be field position. Agreed, and I think confidence is big right now after that last drive. To be able to flip the field like that, not just do it, but go down and score a touchdown. Running and throwing. For this offense now moving forward in this game, that last drive is going to pay big dividends. He'll bring it out. It's Stanley. That gamble did not pay off as they bring him down at the 12-yard line. Here comes the offense on first down. Running back searching for a hole. Really nice run there. Good, solid pickup, and they'll move the sticks with a first down. To the ground. He's got it again. Makes a man miss. They get him on the ground, and with that, we'll head to the second quarter. Guys, Colorado has the lead here, and we've come to the end of the first as we take a moment to check out the stats so far.
going in the opposite directions now as we crank it up in the second. We'll get this quarter going with a second down play. To the ground with the back. Pushes ahead for a couple. They'll mark it at the 33. They're strong and they're sprawl. Defensive tackles, they're sprawl. They're such big jokers in the middle where they just lock out those offensive linemen. And running backs, listen, they don't have much of a chance when you got that 300 plus pound guy grabbing you around the shoulder pad. You tend to go to the ground pretty quickly. Quick pass on the fly motion. All kinds of running room. And it is a chunk play, a huge gain on that one before the defense brings it to an end. And you see so many of these plays now in today's football. Wide receiver coming in motion, and the quarterback catches it, just flips it forward. That's a completed pass. Uh, you see the big plays where it just lets him get on the edge really, really quickly. And if he drops the football coming in motion, it's just an incomplete pass. So these plays are getting big plays with really no risk. Got six on first down. Now a lot of options on second and four. The receivers often will run their route based on a side adjustment. To the air. It's rising. It's complete to the right. They get him down, but this offense is set up first and goal from the nine. Big play in the passing game there, and I like the receiver gearing down in the zone. Did a nice job finding the soft spot on defense between the defenders, giving the quarterback an easy target to throw to to complete that throw. He'll be brought down at the five-yard line, and this defense is on its heels. Second and goal for this offense. The run up the middle, trying to power to the goal line. A solid pickup there before the defense is able to make the stop. If you don't tip the scales at three bills, stay on the sidelines. Big boys and quarterback sneaks it forward and into the end zone for a touchdown. Timely decisions, effective play management helps him get in the end zone after that marathon drive. And every time the offense needed to play, boom, they got it. I mean, you think about it. Whether it was a small run, small pass, whatever they needed, they got it done, and they popped it in for the score. Lining up to add another. And the extra point puts them up by a field goal. And let's check in with Kevin Connors in the studio. Kevin? Boys, if it's happening in college football, we've got eyes on it. Check this out. Auburn is ahead early in Jordan Hare, but that's not exactly Bo Jackson out there running the ball. This game is a long way from being over. They are up by seven over ULM. We've got our eye on this one and everything else going on throughout the day, guys. Oh, and how about that? I know Kevin and those guys will be keeping an eye on it for us. He's brought down solid pickup, but a little bit short of the first down. From the gun, they'll try the middle. And excellent vision to find running room there and make a really good pickup before the defense put a stop to it. Going up top on first down. It's caught downfield. Lots of green grass as he gets it to the 31. And the Buffaloes racing to the line in the hurry up. Using his legs, it's Hayden. Nose is ahead to the 30-yard line to pick up of one. Didn't get much on first down, it's second and nine. He's looking to throw. And that's gonna be incomplete. A lot of contact on the play, but no flags. It'll be third down. If they can convert here, that type of play can really give you a shot of momentum. Got a man, it's Horn. Good job running that route to get past the sticks because he got nothing after the catch. The give. And he could not get loose on the run. Got stuffed on first down, it's second and 10. They'll keep it on the ground. Maybe a three-yard pickup there, third and long coming up. 
They line up with some serious work to do if they want to convert this one. Scanning the field, it's Sanders. Quarterback feeling the pressure, and down he goes at the 22. And the defense there goes zone coverage, maybe confused the quarterback a little bit, forced him to hold on to the football, and that allowed the pass rush to get home. They'll send out the kicker to try to salvage this drive. It's good! And guys, that three ball has us all tied up here in the second. And we're all square as he's set to kick it away. From inside the 15, here's the return. Not a lot of space to be found. Good hustle by the coverage team, and they stop him at the 21. The Utah offense returns ready to go back on the attack. Leaves it with the back. They'll knock him down after a six-yard gain to the 27. Six-yard pickup on first down. Leaves him with second and four. Keep it on the ground. Defense not budging. He's still able to get two to the 29. It's third down now. They ought to be able to get off one more play before the two-minute warning. Trying to pick up a first down. He'll throw on third down. And they got him. They'll get him down for the sack. Quick timeout by the defense there, trying to make sure everyone has the same call. You want to talk about aggressive or nuts? This offense is staying on the field inside their own 30. Well, they just drained all the suspense out of the fourth down conversion, moving the chains easily. And the Utes will snap it on first and 10. He's going to pass. Fires to the big fella. Still running at the 40. And he was off to the races. Finally tripped up at the 36. Well, I know the tight end did some good things after the catch, but got to give the quarterback credit, too, for the location of the throw. Because he put it out in front of his big man, he was able to make the catch and accelerate, creating some distance there between him and the defense. And chunk plays are the name of the game, and they get one here before the defense finally makes the stop. I mean, these quarterbacks nowadays can run so fast. Think about who you've got chasing them. Defensive linemen, those big old defensive tackles, defensive ends, linebackers, they can't catch him. And he strides his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Utes! And I just love the execution by this offense. Late in the half, man, you want to take the lead. You want to get that momentum on your side, and they do it. They finish it with the passing game. And I'll tell you what, heat that passing game up. You can keep this lead, keep the momentum, and keep putting up numbers. Ready to try the point after. And the extra point is true, and they're on top by seven. They put together an 81-yard drive, and they get it into the end zone with a six-yard touchdown pass. This will not be returnable as it sails out of the back of the end zone. Colorado has the ball back, and the Buffaloes hoping to put their team in prime position on offense. David, they couldn't pay off that last drive with a touchdown. Now they move the ball down the field and hit the afterburners, kid. The 10! And he ran away from the defense to take it in. Touchdown, Buffaloes! Well, this offense is top 10 in the country in points per game because they've got a lot of speed and they've got home run hitters. They score fast. They don't need 10 plays to go down the field. You saw it right there. They've recruited well. They've got playmakers. They're going to be a problem for defense all year long. And they did tack on that extra point without any adventure. After that latest answer tied things up, just about set to kick it away again. Looking for an alley from inside his own 10. Not a lot of space to be found. Good hustle by the coverage team, and they stop him at the 21. Offense set on first down. Looking for a man. It's rising. Got out of trouble and throws. How about that play to get a hand in there and force the incompletion? 
You know, it's so important for corners to be able to transition, right? You got to have real loose hips. You got to be able to change direction on a dime. And in zone coverage, when you see the ball thrown, you can break on it and force incompletions like that. How about this backer in pass coverage and bringing the big hit stick with him, too? Ball sitting right at the 30. It'll be third and short. Looking to throw for it. Steps away. It's a game of first downs, and they've got one out to their own 37. The offense will stop the clock and use one of its timeouts. You can tell this is a pass play. He has his eyes down the field. He's looking to throw the football. But how nice is it when you got a guy like this that can scramble? And he can't escape, and down he goes. That defender is a matchup nightmare for any offensive lineman to block. He's got athleticism. He's got length. He's got flexibility. He put it all on display on that side. Got it in the middle. It's Randall. They bring him down, but a solid pickup to put them in position to pick up a first down. On third down, he drops to throw. Makes a connection. He found plenty of room, and he gets it to the 39-yard line. The offense quickly calls timeout to stop the clock. They'll snap it from the 39, first and 10. He wants to throw. He'll take a shot. And they won't be able to connect downfield looking for a big-time play. Running out of time here in the first half, they're going to have to be efficient to put some points on the board before the break. On second down, looking again to throw. And a really nice run and pick up there before the defense avoided disaster and stopped the really big play. Quick timeout from the offense to save precious seconds. And with just a few seconds remaining here in the first half, they'll try to kick a field goal. Smashes it between the uprights. And the field goal to end the half takes us to halftime. That's the end of the second quarter. That means it's time to join Kevin in our halftime update. Fellas, what an environment there today. All the animosity and flat-out hatred that comes with a good old-fashioned rivalry game on display in that first half. Each of these two offenses has looked like well-oiled machines, but it doesn't take a genius to figure out these two passing attacks have run circles around these defenses. Man or zone, nothing seems to be working. And I'm not sure that defensive coordinator is going to be able to figure things out here at halftime. That said, let's get back to the field and our guys in the booth to see who comes out on top of this rivalry contest. The Utes will line up to kick off and start the second half. From inside the 10, here he comes. Just never had a chance to shake loose, and he'll be brought down at the 24. And the Colorado offense is coming back onto the field. I imagine we'll see them go right back to work up top after how productive that passing game was in the first half. And it's interesting. If I'm the defense and I've got the lead, they've had success throwing the football, but we're winning. I don't know that this defense changes too much of what they've done in the first half. I think they got to do a better job with pass rush. They might want to change their coverages as well because they're probably at this point expecting this offense to have to keep throwing, considering they did have success in the first half. And he's a real nowhere man tackled in this no-gain land. A third and long coming up here. Wants to throw. It's Sanders. Throws to the wideout. And a missed opportunity on third down as the defense knocks it free. And fourth down is coming up. The Buffaloes will punt this one away. This will be the second time they've had to kick it away. He'll bring it back. It's Stanley. He gets a block. Bulldozes him. The speed, the shiftiness, the elusiveness, all on display in that sweet return there. Line gets set. First down. They'll run it. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. 
And defense nowadays, they don't look at stats of what is the yards per rush. They look at how many negative plays they can break. Because why? Now you look at second down, man, it just became very predictable for this offense. Nice job creating the loss on first down. He is knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. And the running game has gone in the wrong direction. The offense tries to turn it around and go forward on third down. Got it in the middle. It's Randall. They make the stop, but not before they do their work up top and pick up a first down. Man, you hate that if you're on defense. Third and long, you've got everybody covered downfield, and you let the running back pick it up on a check down throw. You've got to be way better tackling in that situation. That is a blown opportunity for this defense. When you play zone and you drop back, you're dropping back to a spot, and that means there's going to be holes, and the quarterback has to do a good job of reading it, seeing it, throwing it between those holes. He does a really nice job there. He makes the defense pay for playing zone coverage. Didn't get much on first down. It's second and nine. On the run, it's Bernard. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. Listen, the, the offensive coordinator's best friend in the red zone is the running game. Make guys commit near the line of scrimmage so I can throw behind. This defense is good, but I'm going to challenge. Touchdown, Utah! And they take it in for six more points. Quarterback's abilities to read the field is huge. And also the anticipation, the timing. To be able to throw the football, Jesse, and hit a guy in stride so he can get run after the catch and get in the end zone, that was a nice job by the quarterback. Yeah, it's critical, David. And listen, a lot of times, touchdown passes aren't thrown into the end zone. You've got to read the coverage, hit the open guy, and let him do the rest. And with the extra point, they're now up by a touchdown and a field goal at 10. We check in with Kevin Connors. What's going on, Kevin? All right, guys, a little update on what else is happening in college football this weekend. Arizona is a big right now, and what's shaping up to be a blowout they'll remember in Tucson for some time. They're up by 28 over Houston. We've got our eye on things here and everything else going on right now. And any updates, you'll see them here, guys. And how about that one? Kevin will be keeping an eye on everything going on elsewhere. Defense there to stop him after a gain of one to the 22. And the Buffaloes want to pick up the tempo. Yeah, and this has been tough sledding. All right, this, this offense has really struggled to move the football, and, and this game's all but over. But here's the thing, man. Thank God you don't play this defense every week. And let's, let's continue to work here and find something we do good, build maybe a little bit of momentum so next week we play a little bit better football. On third and long, trying to have a big completion here. Finds a man on the left. He gets those chains moving, gets it out to the 42-yard line. Well, I think on that play, you saw why this guy's such a big weapon in this offense. At receiver, he does such a nice job with his routes. He's patient, and he's consistent, and he's got good hands. You don't see him put a lot of balls on the ground. Nice job there picking up the first down. Up-tempo for the offense. He was not fooled on that one. You know, a lot of times you want to buy space, and you throw this route really when it's off coverage. But you could tell the cornerback was up, ready to come, pounce on that screen, and get the tackle for him. And he was just a couple of steps away from taking that one even further after the catch. Really good job working through his progression. You get it to him quickly, and the big tight end does. The expressway is wide open. He's there to make the stop, but not before he sets up this offense. First and goal from the seven. Receiver looks it in. It's complete. They've got it down to the three-yard line. Really well done on that throw and catch. Now on second and goal. They'll run it. Into the end zone he goes. Touchdown, Bucks! Sometimes we ask coaches about halftime adjustments, and they go blah, 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 blah. And then sometimes they make some good ones. 
<laughs> Sometimes that blah, 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 blah actually works, but it's working now, but it might be too little too late, but at least you got the party started. On to attempt the try. And it's up and good as they draw just a touch closer. So it's an 80-yard drive and close the deal with a three-yard touchdown run. Coming out with it, it's Stanley. I imagine he's going to get an earful on the sideline after bringing it out of the end zone and being knocked down at the 11. Utah has it back on the offense coming onto the field. The give to the back. Keeps the legs moving. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. Didn't get much done on that first play of the drive. It's second and 11. Dropping back. It's rising. He's got it. And chunk plays are the name of the game, and they get one here before the defense finally makes a stop. And there was no question in that scenario. That's where the quarterback was going. He knew he had his receiver in a matchup that he liked, running a route where he would find himself open. Nice job between those two. Finds his way for three after the 33. Small gain, I know. But again, the defense knows he's going to run the football. He's willing to run the football, not just drop back and pass. Make him honor the run game. you got to do a lot of this. And they'll bring him down, but not before he picks up the first down. And David, how demoralizing does it have to be for a defense when you know they're going to run it, everyone in the stadium knows they're going to run it, and still, you cannot stop it? There's nothing more demoralizing as a defensive lineman because it just it ticks you off. It gets in your head. You, you know that guy's going to come off and smack you, and you got to do something about it. I think the defense may be time to start committing more guys to stopping that run, not worrying about the pass as much. Really putting together a threat now. They get the first. It's at the 37. Guys, that's the end of the quarter, and Utah has the lead here. And as we switch ends of the field, let's take a quick look at the national rankings. One quarter to go, and might we have the makings of a classic fourth quarter finish. And the Utes come to the line with a new set of downs. Looking for room. It's Bernard. Little too soft in that run defense. He picks up four to the 32. It's a point in the game, I think, as a coaching staff where you really challenge your offensive line to go win the football game, right? We've got to lead late. We're going to run the football. And the defense and everybody in the stadium knows that's what's going to happen. Can we run the ball down their throats and impose our will? That's what this offense right now is trying to do. They'll throw it from the red zone. That's caught. It's Keithy. Touchdown, Utes! And they add six more to the board with that trip to the house. Like a Thanksgiving turkey. They're just being carved. No shot. They have no idea how to get in this quarterback's head. He's on fire. Everything he's doing is working defensively. We got to figure something out. We got to try to do something a little bit different. Bring more pressure. At this right shoot, he's on so much fire. You might as well just send everybody. Blitz everybody. Live with the results because everything else ain't working anyways. They'll try to add another to their lead. And the extra point extends the lead to double figures at 10. About to kick it off after punching it in for the touchdown. No shot at a return. It's out of the end zone, and it'll be a touchback. Colorado has the ball back, and the Buffaloes hoping to put their team in prime position on offense. Off the play fake on first down. Fires one high and deep. Wide open. He makes the catch. And he takes it all the way. They couldn't stop him. Touchdown, Colorado. Well, how about that? And after that touchdown, we might have a finish after all, Jesse. I love it, Reese. And this team is not quitting. Yeah, they're down on the scoreboard right now, but they are clawing and they are scratching their way back in this game. They're going to keep going hard until this clock reads all zeros. 
Lining up for the PAT. And with the extra point, every little bit counts as they get closer. That kind of drive will boost your confidence. One play, hit the big pass, put a touchdown on the board. From inside his own 15, trying to follow his blockers. And the coverage team able to make the tackle. The Utah offense returns ready to go back on the attack. Using his legs, it's Bernard. Defense not budging. He's still able to get two to the 29. At this point of the game, the offense has the lead, and the offensive coordinator knows they want to keep running the football. So he's going back, he's looking at his playlist, and he's saying, which runs work the best for me in this game? What can I lean on right here to make sure we win this one? He's got a yard out to the 30-yard line. It'll take some work to get to the sticks. It's third and long from the 30. Looking downfield, it's rising. Moving, keeping the eyes downfield. And the quarterback was trying to extend the play, and the defense brought it to a close. This offense has already converted once on fourth down. Can they do it again? He fires one deep down the right side. It's incomplete, and they desperately needed to keep that drive going, and they couldn't make the connection. A first down for the offense. The give to the single back. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. And the Buffaloes want to crank the tempo. Off the play fake. Drop. Oh, no, the ball popped out. They recover their own fumble. Somehow, who knows how they got that thing back. They love to make this kick easier by picking up a few on third down. It's 56 yards out from here. Didn't have much of a choice, just had to throw that one away. It'll be fourth down. The Buffaloes decide to punt it away. Doesn't say much for your drive when you're looking forward to the punt. Punt goes out of bounds, and a really nice job as they stick them deep in their own end. They'll mark it around the 10. Utah has it back, and the offense coming onto the field. These last couple of drives, Jesse, have been about the defense making clutch stand. I think for this offense, they can stay aggressive knowing that their defense is going to bail them out time and time again here. Yeah, and especially when you go for those fourth down situations, you do that a lot of times because you know your defense can make stands, make stops. They did on that last possession for them. Well, this defense has tried to find ways to disguise their coverage and mix it up, try to confuse the QB. It's not working. Though. That last completion, he's now got over 300 yards passing. Here they come on second down, trying to put this game away. The gift to the back. The Utes get it past the sticks. Well, the defense didn't blitz. They didn't have everybody in gaps, and the offensive line took advantage at the point of attack, getting some push, opening up a hole, and the offense ripping off a nice run there. And a pickup of eight opens a world of opportunities on second and two. Kept it on the ground on first down, now back to the line. The give and tick, 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 tick. Tackle is made after the first down I love when players understand situations and they understand where the first down marker is and they understand where I got to get to a lot of people you'll see run north south and try to bounce out wide and make big plays sometimes it's not about making big plays sometimes it's about getting that first down to make sure I get an extra set of downs instead of trying to make those big touchdown runs wide receiver now comes in motion touch pass on the jet sweep Russell to the ground after picking up the first down. I love that play call, and I love the timing of the pre-snap motion. Because the quarterback was able to get it to the receiver right behind the offensive line, because of the timing, he was able to outflank the defense. That puts him out in space where he's able to use his speed. Nice job with the pre-snap motion and timing. And the youth come to the line with a fresh set of downs. One man in the backfield, and he gets it. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. 
quick timeout called by the defense, stopping the clock to save as much time as possible for their offense. Going to work in the red zone, they can't pick up the first down without getting it into the end zone. Got enough space! And they stop him just short of the goal line. They'll mark it at the one. Defense uses a timeout quickly, trying to get that ball back and preserve time for their offense. Boy, they love to move the sticks here and take a shot at it on first and goal. That just never had a chance as they controlled the middle of the field and stopped him in the backfield on third down. They'll keep the offense on the field on fourth down already with a one-possession lead. <laughs> Touchdown, Utah! And they take it in for six more points. And, you know, late in the games, offenses sometimes get conservative when they got the lead and they got the ball. I love this offense. They were aggressive. They got another score added to the lead. Now you're trying to salt this game away. Lining up to tack one more onto that lead. And the extra point extends the lead to double figures at 10. Let's go to the studio now and check in with Kevin Connors. Kevin, what do you got? Guys, let's get you up to speed on what's going down in this fun college football game today. USC is putting on an offensive clinic. They've built a big lead, and this one is approaching blowout territory. They're up by 15 over Nebraska. We'll circle back if anything big happens in this college football matchup. Thanks for the update on that one. Kevin, let us know when it goes final. Grabbed in the middle. It's Hayden. You know, sometimes when you're throwing against zone coverage, you need time for the routes to develop. So nice job by the quarterback there, being patient, allowing his receivers to work themselves open. On second down, looking to throw. Grab near the marker. It's Horn. And the defense makes the immediate tackle, but he has enough for the first down. He's looking to throw it. And that incomplete pass caused by the big hit on first down. Second down coming. After the quarterback and receiver failed to hook up, they'll try it again on second down. He wants to throw it again. He wants a big play here late. And just too much on that pass. Too high, too wide, out of bounds and incomplete. Now facing a third and long. Back to throw, it's Sanders. Unloads to the wide out. He's missed three in a row now with that last incompletion. And now such a tough situation. Late in this game, you're trailing, but now it's fourth and long. Like, it's one thing if it's fourth and short. This makes it even more. He hurls one deep down the left side. Incomplete on fourth down, and man, did they need to keep that drive alive. The Utah offense returns ready to go back on the attack. And they'll take a knee and watch this clock keep on winding, winding its way toward a victory. You know what's great about rivalry games? Each side hates every wretched breath the other one sucks into their greedy lungs. Figuratively speaking, of course, and when you win, oh, oh, oh is that sweet. It's glorious to, to be able to brag, to be able to text message your buddies, to be able to post stuff on social media. It's a lot of fun. I think fans like it more than anybody, but it's something that you every year you have a couple games starred. This was one of them, Jesse. They took care of business, and now you move on to the next. They really did, and we saw some great individual efforts in this game by the winning team, too. So cool to see some of these players that have had terrific collegiate careers make some of the biggest plays of their lives in this game, in a rivalry game that just means so much. This was a fun one to call. That's going to do it for us. For Jesse Palmer, David Pollock, our entire broadcast team, I'm Reese Davis. This has been another presentation of EA Sports College Football.